Okay, so I just tested, I just listened to the one I did last night when I had my hat on, and the, uh, oh wait, did I have my, yeah, I had my earbuds in, okay, and so I'm doing something really strange right now, I am getting up first thing in the day, putting my clothes on, and gonna go out with Blue instead of just like, I mean, normally I let him out first thing, and uh, I decided I just felt compelled to get out and move. Mm. We might just go in the field so that I don't have to have him on a leash. And who knows, maybe we'll go around twice because I just have this feeling that I want to move. Like, I really just need to move energy. And uh, the thing that I wanted to say, two, two things, is that actually, well, I might not be as um, ambitious as I thought because I may eat up some coffee and take it with me. So he may actually get outside before I do. But um, the thing I wanted to say, the two points I wanted to make while I'm turning this on right now, one of them is that obviously I'm dating these. I'm essentially time stamping them into the universe. And, okay, now I have three points I want to make. So obviously, in a way, you could call them time sensitive. Like I'm talking about leading leading up to this portal and, I actually was really shy about talking about it at all because not because I didn't believe it and not because I didn't think there like it was going to have an effect, but really because I, I hadn't really taken into account how much of it had already been in my own experience. And I don't like to speak, even if something resonates with me and I trust it to be true. I only like to speak about things that are my personal direct experience and so it never really occurred to me that like this was my personal direct experience and now more and more it's become that and so that's my whole point my whole point is to say that I have experienced now such an incredible shift especially the last few days that I'm comfortable speaking about the portal opening because it's just very obvious to me that something is going on and so that's part one part two is I blew up all these balloons for this party and it's funny I blew them up pretty hard but I think it's gonna be fun so part two is actually related to the balloons Just trust yourself. I am someone who I go off script a lot and I just do what feels right to me. Like I'll especially like this is what happened with the balloons. And this was the example actually of the thing that I wanted to say. I it's why I never really like telling anybody like if I'm going to do something, I never like telling them in advance. And I kind of knew I shouldn't have said anything, but I, I did. And I said, oh, I'm going to do this. And then because at the end of the day, I really love the freedom of just doing whatever the hell I want to do. And the minute that you tell people, like, the minute that you start saying, I'm going to do this or that, and then they start having an input and it's like, no, no, never mind. Now I don't even want to do it. (laughs) And so all of that is to say that trust yourself. Because I went off script and did like it a little bit differently than my original plan. And I was really happy with the result. And I woke up to a text this morning being like, oh, or, you know, 
kind of like thinking that I'm still doing the old plan. It's like, no, I'm not. And the point of that is to say, it doesn't matter if you've told anyone that you're going to do something or not. And that's actually, that's not the point. (laughs) I'm walking around doing stuff, so I'm a little convoluted. The point is this. It doesn't matter what you said you're going to do. That was then. This is now. And so trust yourself. It doesn't, I've had this happen so many times where, like, I said I was going to, this is going to sound really silly, but it was for a kid's party, and I said I was going to do one type of balloon, and then when I really felt into it, over the days leading up, I said, no, I'm going to do a different type. It sounds so ridiculous. I know that, but it was the difference between helium and like pearlescent latex ones or just the kind that you can play with. And I made the executive choice that I I was going to do the ones that you can, you like, you can play volleyball with and stuff. So that was my decision. I feel Also, like, as I feel like it's better for the environment. And plus, when I had originally wanted to do the helium ones, I it was kind of like my idea that I just came up with. And then I found out that it had already been done at a like a party before that was whatever. Not that it's that original of an idea, but the point being, I came up with it and was like, okay, I'm going to do this and happened to mention it to the person who the party, the kid, the kid's party was for. And so my text today that I got was like, Oh, are you, you know, wanting me, wanting me to do the helium? And I didn't even say like, no, I made the decision that I'm going to do this because for X, Y, Z, I didn't even say that. And I'm like, listen, you get what you get. And I'm actually not fully explaining this. So I had already made the choice. I had already gone and gotten the balloons that felt right to me in terms of like, obviously balloons are not, balloons are not great for the environment, no matter which way you cut it. But these just felt more, a little more organic to me. And also, um, at the risk of sounding like totally nuts, I, part of it was the novelty. Like I wanted to, I was like, oh, they probably haven't had a helium balloon in a really long, they haven't you know, each had a helium balloon in a really long time and like kids love simple things like that. Well, then knowing that they have one now at home is kind of like, okay, well, that takes away from my desire for that. But the other thing was when someone tells me, when someone tells me, um, yeah, I hope that you're doing that because there's only one helium balloon at our house and they're fighting over it. And (laughs) I was just like, Okay. I blew my nose and I my I'm having a slight new standard of like editing it out when I do that. But here's the thing. I had already made my choice. Now I could go back to the store. I also have a feeling that there's that there probably is not even helium at the store. I could go back to the store and get the other balloons. But honestly, and this might sound like such a silly thing, but it was like, I made the decision and it's happened in my life so many times, so many times. And this is the point of this example. If I go off road, like off trail and just do whatever feels right to me and disregard anyone else's perspective, it always pays off. It's never not paid off, ultimately. And any time that I've allowed what someone else said to sway me, and I know this sounds like an extremely silly, like, why are you even wasting my time example of these balloons for this party? But it's, it's, an, it's a microcosm of the way that everything works, and that's why, that's why it's worth mentioning. It's like so many people have an instinct and my instinct was like, you know, I was very thought out. It was very felt into. It's not a big deal, but like I knew I was going to the party. I knew I was going to bring at least at least one thing. And I and I wanted it to be something that the girls could have fun with, but that they'd like have to kind of, 
you know, like I love toys that you just have to like use your imagination, but it's like interactive versus just like, and you know, this person is very minimal. So I knew that it wasn't going to be like getting a toll, like bringing a gift. And it's funny too. I found out I was also laughing because I was like, Oh, what happened to those cars that I gave you? And the kid was like, the kid was like, oh, we, we threw those, like, because this person's always, always so minimal with stuff that if you give them a thing, they're usually throwing it away type of thing. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm not get, obviously getting a toy. So I knew I wanted to do that. And my point here is that people are so easily thrown off from what someone else tells them that, and me, me in the past maybe would have been like, oh, I'm going to go back to the store and I'm going to get the kind of balloon that I had, that I had like made the decision, the executive decision not to do. And every time I've ever gone back and from when I had an instinct and followed it. And then before I saw the results, someone kind of, there was a cook in the kitchen and they said to me, Oh, and try and, you know, kind of like swayed the different choice I had made. And every single time I've ever done that, I've regretted it. And I felt like I shouldn't have let, I shouldn't have, like, let, I had clarity. I knew what was right. I knew what was right given all the energies of this, you know. I knew what was, and, it, like, half the time, like, in this example, it could be something as, like, simple as, like, your soul knows that someone else is going to show up, and they're going to have brought those balloons that you felt inspired not to get. Or, like, you know, come to find out this, the other one that they have at home pops and the person is like, you know what, I'm just fucking glad we're done with those balloons. Now we don't have any of it. And so whatever it is, and it's a very ridiculously silly example, but it's an example of life and of just listening to yourself. And it could be a big thing. It could be a small thing, but we are receiving, we're receiving these impulses all the time. And it's, if we just trust, like, <laughs> As, again, as silly as this is, to wake up and get a text about someone, like, asking you to do something or expecting you or desiring you to do something different than you had decided to do, that could be a source of, like, stress for people. People's stresses are not, a lot of times, a lot of times it's, like, their their chronic stress or their this or that is just a buildup of a lot of different interactions exactly like that. It's not usually... It's not usually this big, bad, huge monster under the bed or in the closet. It's usually these small, these small interactions where there's this tension between what you feel and what feels right to you and then what other people up close to you are reflecting or, you know, illustrating and, and you're just like, it's, it's causing you this, this, you exist in this like chronic state of self-doubt. And so the best gift that I have stepped into for myself is whether it's a big decision in a weird way, like so-called large ones are almost easier because they usually have way more energy behind them where like these are easier to doubt yourself where it's like, Oh, it's so stupid. I should just go do that. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that living your life in the flow, like obviously it's not a life or death fucking scenario. Oh, is it raining? It's balloons for a fucking party. But the point is, is that this, you, you learn on things like this. You try it out on small things. Usually it's like, it's like training wheels. And you start to realize that nothing is that big of a deal. Do what feels right to you. Do what feels the best for you. And watch the way that it plays out. And also, and here's the caveat. You have to, you have to, show up guilt-free you can't be like oh I'm sorry I know I disappointed you my thing is like this is sort of separate but when someone tells me that kids are fighting over something I ironically my solution is not to get two of everything just because like the way I go through the world it's so so many times like things are very unique like it'll be like there's one of these so it's always it, it so often it becomes a matter of do I just want not want to give anything at all? Or is it like, okay, there's one of these. And then there's a, there's one of this other thing. And so there's one of this and one of that and one of this. So there's plenty to go around, but like not everything is exactly the same. 
And you guys are going to have to figure it out. And I don't care how old they are. Kids are energy beings. You don't need to, you, it's not about, it's not about like explaining rules at all. It's just about them being in a good state of energy and you being in a state of energy where you're not putting up with bullshit. And so I had these exact kids. I know, I know how it can get when they're fighting over stuff. I had them at my house the other day, but I had no problems with it as soon as they realized that I was dead serious. I was so calm. And I said, the minute that they started fighting over something, I said, listen, I'm not going to get in the middle of who did what. I'm not going to get involved with setting time limits and this and that. That's on you guys. So I said, here's the thing. And they're, they're like two and a half and four. And so they're young. And I said, listen, guys, I'm going to make it really simple for you. If you guys can't get along, I'm taking away whatever toy it is you're fighting over. And it's going to be as simple as that. And they figured out amongst themselves so fucking quickly how not to fight over stuff. And at one point in the whole day, I did have to take one thing away. And it was at the end of the day and they were tired and it was like before nap time and, and yada, yada. And the end of my part of the day, like my time with them. And I had to take one thing away and it was just for a few minutes and then gave it back and there was no, there were no further problems. So my point is trying, there's so many points in there. And one of them is that trying harder, trying harder to make an even playing field when you are dealing, no, you're always dealing with it. So trying harder to make an equal playing field does not actually equal the playing field. All it does is support dysfunctional dynamics that the much more effective way would be to get to the root of the dysfunctional dynamics. If I have kids and they're fighting over something, then The solution is not to add another thing in to the dysfunction. That's like rewarding dysfunction. If I have kids and they're fighting over something, and don't get me wrong, I do feel like they should definitely have their own people should be able to have their things that are theirs. You know, like these are your stuffed animals. These are your clothes. Like people should have that sense of this is mine. You know, I'm, I'm in charge of taking care of it. It's whatever happens with it is up to me. I fully believe that too. What I'm saying is when you go through life and there are going to be instances where there's just simply not more than one of something and whether it's even like there's two of something, but then like one of them is a different color or whatever, there's, you can drive yourself absolutely batshit crazy trying to level the playing field, trying to fix anything in the 3D is not the way to go. And it's so essentially my point is to say I don't really care. Like the fact that kids are fighting over something is not a motivator for me to want to go back out to the store and level the playing field. That's an energy thing. That's not, that's not something that's a dysfunctional energy. That's not going to be solved by adding more in. And so it, it, it may be solved in the short term. And sometimes it's just easier. Sometimes it's just easier to give in. You're like, I've had it. I'm blah, blah, blah. For me to go back out to the store, I could, but it's probably not my path of least resistance then because ultimately it's like I don't really care. I don't live with them. And so it's not my job to make it easier for anyone. I know that sounds really, really harsh. I know that sounds really harsh, but I've also noticed I, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of that. But what I want to say is that. Every relationship has a very particular dynamic, and sometimes you'll notice that let me let me let me reframe it. When you're working from a place of being in tune with your energy, you will know what feels right or not because there are times where I feel inspired to make this person's life easier. And this was just one of those things where for whatever reason, it did not feel like the path of least resistance to me. So that was 
that was where the whole dynamic was coming from. So it's never, it's never, it's never a right or wrong in terms of action. It's never to say sometimes the best thing isn't just to fucking go to the store, get another balloon and say, now shut the hell up. Like stop fighting. I'm tired and I need a break. Like as a parent, you know, I'm not, I'm not judging that. What I am saying is that there are certain overall universal energy laws at play that it's worth employing over attempting to fix things in physical action only because the root of the symptom will continue to show up and it will become increasingly difficult to fix it in a physical way. And eventually you have to address the ultimate energetic cause. So that's my whole story about the politics of birthday party balloons. That's my ridiculous tale for today. And the other thing, the other thing is, what was the other thing? Oh, I sort of touched on it, but yeah, and then I cycled off of it. So I'm cycling back around to this one last point. Oh. Speaking of helium, okay, I feel like there's like two things, but one is family, like gravitational pull, and the other is just like, I've started sleeping, I mentioned it in one of the other recordings, I think, I started sleeping on my back. It's really interesting how that eluded me. I had tried sleeping on my back for so long and it was so uncomfortable and I couldn't do it. And I think it might be just the way that I have everything propped now. It's so comfortable. I haven't had any trouble at all. It's like, it's like the weirdest. It's honestly surreal (laughs) for me. It's, it's like, I mean, my life is weird all the time, but this is like one of the weirdest things that's ever happened because of how long and how hard I tried to like be good at sleeping on my back and I could never do it. And now it's just all, it's like this magical, all of a sudden I can just sleep on my back. And again, I think it's the angle and I think it's this blanket that I kind of put over my pillow. Cause it, I think it kind of adjusts to my neck and my head. So it's not just like staunchly just like lying back and you know, mummy pose like flat, whatever, whatever. And that's not the point. I think that a part of what cause I always loved that that feeling of like groundedness and closed offness of sleeping on my side. It was almost like like growing like as a kid, as a young kid, I sucked my thumb and I remember even like I remember sometimes going behind the chair the recliner in the living room, like I had my blanket that it's worn to absolute thread at the, like literal threads at this point. I don't, I, I have it. It's at my parents' house. Like I don't have it with me, but I sucked my thumb and I had this blanket and I really liked that feeling of going behind the chair and feeling like in a cave and just feeling enclosed. And so I almost feel that I really liked that energy going to sleep, like lying on my side and how I have my bed set up, especially in the colder months. I just have like so many, so many blankets and I have some big, like I have some big stuffed animals that are basically like pillows. And then I have a ton of pillows and just, it's like this pile of stuff that kind of encloses you in it. And I love that feeling. And I, I felt like if I was going to start sleeping on my back, that I was going to miss that kind of enclosed feeling because it's just that feeling of groundedness and safety and comfort and all of that stuff. So the thing that I find really interesting, and obviously you can't account for every single change that's going on. And like, it is spooky to me that I've just adjusted so well to sleeping on my back. And I probably will never go back just because 
I feel like it really, like I wake up and my, it's like, I feel more ready to go. Like I, like a, like a bunch of water hasn't just pooled in my face and it just, it feels really nice. It feels much more energetically sound. And so what I really, what I want to say, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that I feel, and another thing is when I would sleep on my back before all those times I would try, my dreams would be like, my dreams would, they, they seemed like they had a different quality, almost like I was more open. And, and this it might sound super funny because it's like, well, you're off in a dream state. How much does the, how much does your body physiology affect, you know, the energy state? And I don't know, but from experience, what I can tell you is that to me, it really, really feels like now that I am much, much, much more in alignment with my soul on a constant basis, it just feels like this, it feels like this constant presence in me. And I'm just so much more aware of it now. It, like, and I feel like to some extent you're, as someone who's evolving and doing this work, it sounds like you're almost always repeating yourself. It's like, well, I really feel my soul this week. It's like, well, you said that last week, but it's like, I know, but it's more now. And that's kind of what it always feels like. You're always kind of saying like, wow, now I'm doing this. It's like, well, I probably said it a month ago, but now it's just more intense. And so my point in saying that is that I feel that now that I'm so, I'm feeling so much more at home in the universe. Like I'm feeling more to the point where I'm feeling actively, physically more at home in the universe than in a way than on earth. And I think that part of the reason that I'm enjoying sleeping on my back so much is that I feel open. It like it feels like it opens me up more to the energies. It's like my my physiology is just open. Like my chest is open. My face is to the sky. It's like this feeling of being so comfortable in the universe, in myself, in my own energy, and not feeling like I need to comfort myself or hide. It's like, because my soul is always with me, it's always comforting me. It's not like something that I have to seek through a physical state, even something as seemingly mundane as like the position that I go to sleep. And don't get me wrong, I still think that that's like, I still love the feeling of this side sleeping position, but I'm choosing, I'm really, really enjoying the expansive feeling and the open, trusting, kind of like easily soaring through the universe experience of of sleeping with my chest open and and my face open and everything just like, it's like a feeling of courageousness. And so, yeah, I'm really, it's in, and I think one of the other things I was going to say is just like this feeling of constant connection with my soul like almost like having a microphone in my ear like I was gonna say bug in my ear but I feel like it would be confusing if I meant an actual bug or like a bug mic or whatever it just feels like genuinely feeling the presence of my soul at all times and the moment that energetically In my life normally, I would kind of sway a little bit off course, instantly feeling that gentle nudging coming in, immediately being aware of it and knowing that it was always there, but that I wasn't able to really hear it or feel it. So then I would go so far off. And now it's like, it's just this feeling of really trusting everything. And... It's this feeling of existing in a state of trust because of the connection to the soul. And (sighs) 
the one last thing is that I have a family gathering later today and just being sensitive to the dynamics of ancestral energy, of biological family densities, and Yeah, my mind, my mind went kind of far off there. It's nothing bad or to be avoided per se. It's just, I, I feel I'm only speaking for myself. There is a tendency to have this very, it's really funny. It's like a bell curve in my experience, which I was not expecting this. So when I first started my awakening journey and I was very sensitive energetically and it would be really hard for me to get together with my family because I was changing so much as a person and I couldn't talk about any of the stuff and I just felt so weird and out of sorts. And like, I was so sensitive to, I was so sensitive to the energies that had always been there, but that I hadn't really been aware of. And it was harsh. I had to really get myself in a good place energetically to go into that lion's den. And that's not a commentary on how good of people anyone is or are it was just purely the sensitivity to the energy and so then there was a time where my energy was so great that I could go over and spend time and it was like pretty much all fun and games and that was like the longest period of time where it was all really really good and now it's all good but I'm more sensitive again. And so it's not that it's not good. It's just that my level for good has changed. And, and my standard for what constitutes a good time is a little bit different. And it's just a very... It's just a very, very isol like, I really enjoy I enjoy the feeling of freedom and the feeling of my soul and the feeling of my own energy more than anything else. And it's becoming more and more and more a state of consciousness for me that – and this will sound bad. I don't like saying this, but – Being around people is just so not only low on my list of priorities, but like it's just not being around people is just not really a desire of mine at this point, really at all. And yeah, I, I and it's it's not a lack of love for of people. 
it's just that there is unless the person I will say like there are very 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 few exceptions to people that I know who are in such a light state that I don't have that feeling of that gravitational pull, but it's just that almost everyone that I know exists in this way that in order for me to connect or communicate with them, I have to densify my energy. And I just, don't prefer to do that seeing as I've committed my entire life to de-densifying my energy and that's the whole you know mission and so it takes a very light it takes a very light being for me to want to engage with at this point and 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 they can be wonderful people and everyone I'm talking about everyone I know And that's the greatest paradox is that every single person that I know, I love these people and they're wonderful people. But like I said, my desire to get together with them pretty much almost without exception, like everyone in my life, like I do not have a desire to like physically really be around them. And it's not that I can't or that I don't sometimes, and that I don't have fun, but it's just like my natural state, it's kind of like wild animals, how when people are coming, they just run away, that's their instinct, that's sort of my feeling with people, and what's really funny is that, again, another paradox, I am the most open, when I see people on the street, I go by instinct, obviously, but more often than not, I love nothing more than meeting eyes, and smiling at them, and, you know, I love going out of my house with an open heart, I love that, but in order to maintain that freedom, and that joy, and that lightness, I have to really conserve my energy from kind of like three-dimensional mass consciousness levels of human interaction, so that's like really where it's so it's so many it's so many paradoxes all rolled into one. That's just what that's just what awakening is. That's just what enlightenment is. That's what all of it is. It's just it's just that. And so anyway, it's 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 a paradoxical thing. And I'm going to leave this off. I don't even know if we're going to get outside now because it's it's I didn't realize that it was drizzling when I woke up. So All right, so I'm going to leave off, and uh, it's not going to be a tidy goodbye because now I've got I've got other stuff to do. Okay, so the other thing I really wanted to say was that I that I started saying, and then okay, so <laughs> I was saying about time sensitivity and how there was actually another thing that I wanted, like, that was why I started this, but then I remembered that I started on the last coffee thing, so this is just gonna be addendum to to the, to the third one, I'll probably just add it in, yeah, it's like a separate, I think it's a separate recording, but I'll probably just add it in, anyway, not that you care about the way this is edited, because it won't affect you, but, and I use the term edited very loosely, basically slapped together. So yes, the way that I'm doing these is is very time sensitive. But in terms of, you know, like I was talking about time stamping and this and that. But all of these things, although I do feel that right now is an incredibly sensitive and intense time for spiritually sensitive and aware people 
and one of my other friends I know is is feeling it a lot. I talked to her the other night and um she's actually more spiritually aware than I was even like giving her credit for, I would say. And anyway, so my my point being, yes, that's true. But I also I also really really want to bring attention to the fact that it's all it's it you could look at it like time sensitive. And you could also look at it like people are going through some form of this type of thing in in their awakening processes, like regardless of, oh, <laughs> I thought this was a piece of plastic on the floor. It was a piece of ice. It was just funny when you're expecting, you're expecting one, you know, like one sensation and then you get another. So keep seeing this flower car go by so so yeah it doesn't really matter like it is time sensitive to some extent but it also really really doesn't matter like if you I everything that I say is timeless essentially and so everything that I say if someone's getting value of it it, they're going to be getting value regardless of what time that they're, you know, what time that they're, they could listen to it five years from now, 10 years from now, a month from now, a week from now. Everything that I do is with the knowing that probably most of the listeners, just given the way that like I have, you know, 13 subscribers and nobody watches this shit, I'm doing all of this to create a sort of archive for when people do come upon it. And for when it, when it will serve, when it will serve whoever it will find. So I just wanted to say that as far as, as far as like time sensitivity is concerned, that I really wanted to just put that out there. And, uh, so that's part number one. There really is no time sensitivity. And... It's kind of like, I was thinking about, like, it's like with teachings, for example, Abraham Hicks. There will be slightly different tones as time goes on, but essentially the teaching is the same that it's been from day one. And, like, but you can also feel, if you're sensitive to energy, you can feel a lightening and a shifting occurring as we move through space and time. And, and And a slight different approach over the years and even just it comes through even in the change of the of the channeler's voice you know that as the it with age and time and all of that so there's a slightly different energetic quality as you traverse space and time and whatever but the 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 essence of the teaching is always the same for any teacher that's you know just speaking like universal truths and and talking about energy energy dynamics and all of that stuff and the other thing that I wanted to touch upon, which is split energy. It's actually, it's actually from Abraham Hicks, like this line that's, that's really appropriate to this is like, they just say like, make a decision and line up. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just make sure that you line your energy and anxiety is a split of your energy. It's it's going back and forth. It's going, well, maybe this, maybe that. You know, I'm thinking about this, but then I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do, like... So, I really hope that that helps and reaches the right person who needs to hear it because anxiety is ultimately a lack of confidence in yourself and a lack of clarity. And you can actually gain the feeling of confidence by just making a decision and sticking with it and not doubting yourself and not going back. And it takes a certain amount of energetic or even, even mental discipline to some extent to say, this is what I did. I'm not considering any other, any other option. I already made a choice and I'm not backing down on it. Not because, and not in an arrogant way and not to say that there isn't, not to say that there isn't a, a lot of potential right ways to go. There are always a lot of potential right ways to go. There's never one right way. There's never one equivocal, there's never even one equivocal truth. 
there are infinite potentials on all fronts. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you choose, but do yourself a favor and love yourself enough to to make a decision and not concern yourself with the rest of the world. I don't know if you've noticed, but on social media, I've noticed this and it's so funny that people haven't caught on to it. It's so funny. And I get it. It's it's very sedu- it's very seductive to have opinions and choose sides. It is. I get it. It's it's again, it's a gravitational, it's a magnetic pull. So I don't mean this with judgment, but it's really funny to me how people haven't realized that you can post anything online. And there will be a group of people who will think it's amazing. And there will be a group of people that think it's like the worst thing they've ever seen. Like disgusting, abhorrent, terrible. And then there will be that other group that's like, this is so courageous. This is beautiful. This is brave. I love this. This uplifted my day. And someone else going, this ruined my day. I'm, you know, like this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You can post like basically anything, anything. You could, it could be a cute animal thing and then someone's going to say, well, that animal shouldn't be true. Like, it doesn't matter. And, I, and I'm not taking a side. I, I see all of the sides. I'm not taking a side. It doesn't matter. My point is that there are infinite potential truths. There are infinite potentials at any given point. So don't, don't let yourself go crazy. Your mind can keep spinning its wheels and saying, well, should I do this? Should I do that? The best thing to do is take your initial gut response and just trust it and follow through because spinning your wheels mentally is what causes anxiety and you know I love drugs are fun but they it's not gonna be bad they're not a cure to me they're a fun thing to experiment with and explore and have fun with but whatever I I don't I don't want to get into it's not that I'm not clear on it because I am but like there's certain levels of a filter that I do have it's just anxiety is ultimately an energetic state of too much mind chatter and not enough groundedness in yourself and I say that as someone who I know what anxiety feels like I've experienced it I don't tend to be a very anxious person but I have those times where I've, I've definitely experienced it I know what it is and luckily for me I do tend to have a pretty good amount for the most part of um, physical groundedness. So it doesn't take hold as easily in me as it does for some other people. And that's really what I want to say is, is have, have trust in yourself, have faith in yourself because any single potential that you choose is an absolute potential for success. It's a portal for success Just go through life knowing that whatever you're choosing is the best way and do not spend your time and your energy not trusting yourself because it saps you of your joy of life. It saps you of your enjoyment of life. It takes so much away and it it takes the momentum of a really fun, adventurous life away. Just, Just be willing Go lay down. Come on. Come up here. Be willing. Be willing to do that adventure. What is going on over there? Oh, that's really funny. I thought thought they were building something. It was a truck. Be willing to have that adventure. Be willing to, to say, fuck it. Live like a pirate. Take a little risk. I mean, like, it's so silly. The things that we will consider risky, like will be, you know, doing something that we're afraid someone is going to judge or criticize. Who the fuck cares? Just do it. Just do it. Like, start taking those chances within yourself and you're going to realize that there's, you're going to realize really quickly, if you do this for a little bit of time, you're going to realize, okay, there was never anything. I was, that, that I was, I was worried for nothing. There was nothing to fear. It was all in my head. 
And so, yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to say. I'm just going to add this to the to the top of I'm going to add this to the back end of the other recording and just put it together. So, there you go.